Hi, I'm Terry Kimball, President and CEO here at the Chandler Chamber, and I have with us today Senator J.D. Mesnard. Welcome. Good to be with you. So Senator Mesnard is running for re-election in Legislative District 13. So um, welcome. Thanks. So tell me why you want to run again. Well, uh, there's always more to do. It's been an honor to serve these last number of years in both the House and the Senate. We've accomplished some pretty big things, um, but, but there's always more to do to make this state a better place to, to live, to work, to raise a family. Um, and, uh, and so I want to continue. I think I have a track record that shows I can get big things done. Uh, it's a pretty steep learning curve if you're a newbie, is the simple reality. And so I don't, I don't have to deal with that. And, um, and I want to take, take things to the next level. i got little kids now that are going to be growing up in this state, and I want to make sure it's the best it can be. I love that. So let's talk a little bit. Um, what do you think is going to be the biggest challenge facing the district in, or Arizona in the next couple of years that we really need to watch? I think some of it is unfortunately just going to be uh, the, the politics of it all. We do have a, a split government, um, and so you know, navigating that can be a challenge. There's a lot of uh, places that good ideas can go to die <laughs> in that sort of environment, which is unfortunate. Um, but I, I would say what's first and foremost on everyone's minds is the economy. Inflation is still high. It's come down, um, but, but having less of a bad thing doesn't mean there isn't still the impact of the bad thing we've been dealing with for the last few years. And I think Arizona families are, are struggling. And that manifests in a lot of different ways, whether it's the, the price of groceries, uh, the price of gas, home prices we know have been skyrocketing. Uh, and so there are lots of challenges there that we need to, to tackle. But I would say most of them relate to uh, the economic condition. So the Chandler Chamber here represents about 172,000 employees here in Chandler. And how will you continue to foster that relationship between the Chandler Chamber and, and yourself? Yeah, I feel like I've enjoyed a, a good relationship with the Chamber as long as I've been down there. Um, always have an open door policy. I, I know I'm not the expert in every, every area. Um, and, uh, and as the chairman of the Finance and Commerce Committee, dealing with business issues, whether it's the regulatory environment, the tax burden, et cetera, that's near and dear to my heart. I, I suspect that if I have the honor of continuing to serve uh, in the legislature, that will still be an area where I will have um, uh, a significant role. And so I'm gonna continue doing what I've been doing, which is reaching out to you when, uh, when uh, there's an issue that I, I wanted a variety of perspectives on. Of course, you know you can always come to me anyway, but. Um, but I'm, I would say I'm going to continue uh, being the open door that I have been uh, and someone who's focusing on the economy. And I understand that small businesses are the backbone of the economy, that they drive everything. We have some great larger employers as well, and like Intel and others. But the small businesses, especially in this economy that have been struggling, I want to make sure they have a good, um, a good representative, a good cheerleader at the Capitol. So this last legislative session, <laughs> we saw a record number of bills, over 1,700. I, don't, I can't remember what the final count was being introduced last session. What are going to be, um, if reelected, what are going to be your top one, two, or three different policy issues that you really want to focus on? Yeah. I think it's, again, because I have a track record I can point to, it's going to be focusing on what I mentioned before. So how can we make... Uh, the economy um, conducive to job creation. We want a, a thriving environment where, where folks can easily find a job. So it's going to be everything from, from tax policy to you know, red tape and finding ways that we can balance out public safety where it's necessary to step in with regulation. But in many ways, uh, a lot of that red tape gets in the way. And so trying to find ways to streamline that uh, so that, uh, that our businesses can thrive. So from everyone in the legislature, they have their different areas. I think most people know I'm sort of the, the finance guy. I, I get excited about talking numbers. <laughs> Other people, their eyes glaze over uh, to each his own. Uh, but that's an area where I'm going to continue to focus. So as politics become more partisan, um, how will you continue to work with others that you might not agree with? And then what's your plan to have more of a 
a unified political environment down there because it continues to change every yeah, year. It, it does. You know, politics can be very messy and it can be very personal. A lot of people, that's why they sort of throw their hands up and run away from it. Um, it's a messy environment. I think the important thing is in the midst of making laws, which is sort of like making sausage, it is an ugly process at times, that we treat each other with respect and courtesy. I suspect that if you ask just about anybody down there that's had any interaction with me over the years in whatever capacity, whether it's a rank and file or when I was Speaker of the House, they would say that I, I did, if nothing else, I did that. I treated people with respect, um, the respect they're, they're owed, that everybody's owed, but certainly folks who are representing a constituency. Um, I come from the perspective that there, there's no harm in hearing out the other side, even if you vehemently disagree. Uh, I actually believe that if you can't articulate the arguments coming from the other side, then you are probably underinformed. Uh, so I, I'm going to continue to treat people that way. I think everyone deserves that. You're still going to have points of disagreement. You're still going to have uh, tension down there. Um, but you're not going to see me attacking anyone personally or throwing bombs at them. Um, that's just not my style. And I think those that have seen me serve would vouch for that. That's a great way to put it. How will you maintain fiscal responsibility and actually prioritize smart allocation of those monies? Yeah. So, you know, we've seen, I've been down there, I got down there right, right after the Great Recession. So I've seen really good times, really, uh, really tough times. Uh, this most recent budget, we did have a shortfall that was following a budget where we had a surplus. So there's always going to be an ebb and a flow. Um, I do think fiscal restraint is, is in order. That doesn't mean we can't continue to prioritize what we need to, like education, like healthcare, public safety, making sure uh, our citizens are, are, are safe. I think that's one of the top issues um, from the state all the way down to the local level. Um, but I do think right now we need to be, to be careful. Um, I thought this last year's budget was, was a challenge to work through, but we did in a, in a bipartisan way. At the end of the day, it was overwhelmingly supported by both sides of the aisle, including me. That doesn't mean I thought it was great or that if I couldn't do it differently, I wouldn't, but you do work with everyone else down there. It is a, a bipartisan environment. And so I, I appreciated that some of the tough decisions that we needed to be made, uh, that we needed to make, both sides were willing to step forward and make those. Um, I suspect that's gonna be par for the course in the next year or two until we start to climb out of this you know, funk or whatever you want to call it that we're in um, and, and start to regulate uh, uh, the situation with the inflation, et cetera. So uh, we're going to continue to work together as we have. Um, and I, I do think we need to be careful. But I also acknowledge there are areas that need investment. I, I continue to believe that education, for instance, is a, it has to be a top priority. It's near and dear to my heart as an educator. Uh, and that will manifest in how we negotiate the budget down the road. Great. So water's a big issue for, Ch for Arizona, for Chandler as well. Do you support or oppose reducing the 100-year water supply requirement? And how do you propose we to balance new development with our limitations on the water supply? That's a, that's a great question. I, I do think it's, it's a fair conversation to have um, about the 100-year. The when you talk to people who hear uh, that you know, water is an issue in Arizona, they probably will point to either you know, the fact that we've largely been in a drought. The last few years have been OK, but, but we've been in a drought for a number of years. You've, you've seen Lake Mead's water level go down. And so people sort of know instinctively that there's a problem there. Um, but then you also will hear that, oh, there are places in Arizona that apparently are going to run out of water. But if you ask the average person, I'm not sure they would understand that they're talking about 100 years from now. Uh, that's a long time. I mean, the closest that I'm aware of for any other state out there is California. And I think they're looking at like 25 years, which again is a healthy chunk of time. If you add 100 years to us, we're almost twice the age we are as a state. And so I, I think it needs to be a comprehensive conversation. To the extent we can vouch for 100 years, especially when you're in a, a state where a large chunk of the population lives in the desert, that's fantastic. But we need to be honest as well with the bar that we're holding ourselves to. That is a standard where, you know, if we're, let's say we're, we're, our grade is a B right now, but this test for us is harder than any other test for any other state in the country. And so, so what if they're all getting A pluses and we're, we're doing B, B plus on 
on a standard that's exceedingly high. So I'm not saying we should lower the standard. I just think we need to be honest about, about what we're asking. And also, I do think we need to be careful what we're communicating to people. Because when folks hear, oh my goodness, Arizona's gonna run out of water, they're probably thinking like in a few years, a decade or two, they're probably not thinking 100 years. And yet that will uh, reverberate around the country. It will have an impact on, on folks um, because they may not read the fine print that we're talking about is 100 years. So I want a comprehensive conversation. 100 years is a long time. I'm not suggesting it should be changed necessarily, uh, just that people need to recognize that's what we're referring to when people talk about you know, our, our future water supply. That's important to put that in perspective there. I don't think I'm gonna be here in 100 years, I'm just telling you. <laughs> So um, I know we have a short amount of time and we've kind of jumped you know, all over um, on some of the questions. What else do you think that voters need to know about you on why they need to vote for you in November? Or maybe something I didn't ask you that you want them to know? I appreciate that question. Uh, I'll, I'll end where I started. It, it has been an honor to serve. Uh, I, when I ran for office a, a number of years ago, uh, I was younger and I was single, um, didn't have the family responsibilities I have now. Having a wife and now three kids has given me a different perspective and a whole new desire to continue, uh, to want to continue to serve and again, make this state a better place. Um, I will say this though, you know, there are a lot of folks who make promises when they run for office. Um, and, and I think they're well in, intentioned. They, they think they're gonna get in there and, and just do all these things. It's, it's a difficult process. So when someone can get, can get something done, when they have a demonstrated record that they can make big things happen, there's something to be said for that. I was raised in a family where I'm not supposed to like brag or toot my own horn. That wasn't like looked upon favorably. And so I, I don't tend to do that. But when you're campaigning, you have to sort of do that. So I'll go ahead and I'll point to my record and say, look, I think by every measure, um, I've done some really good stuff for Chandler, for Gilbert, for, Gilbert, for District uh, 13, and I'd love the honor to continue to serve. Very well said. Well, thank you. Senator J.D. Mesnard running for re-election for Legislative District 13.